Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about how to use pivot table to analyze a three year sales data. I hope you watched our previous video where we consolidated all three years data files into a single file which can be further used to create a pivot table and analyze the data set. So right now we will be working on the consolidated file that's called three year sales. So I go to sheet one. Let's take a moment to look at the data sets on the header front. We have sales date, region, customer type. So we have three year sales data starting from 1st Jan 2016. We are selling sports equipment and I can see the business segment and the category. Along with that, I see price quantity, the sales amount and finally the discount percentage offered. Now, first thing I do is I select the data set. Then I go to insert and then I'm going to click on pivot table. Now make sure that all of your headings are having some content. If it is a blank, the pivot table will not let you proceed. So for now, let me get back to pivot table and click on that button. It gives me a generic dialog box to which I press OK. Now, most of you would be seeing this grid structure. And I also notice that a lot of you are in the habit of right clicking, going to pivot table options and then display and then checking this classic on, right? This classic setting allows you to drag the fields from this field list to the left hand side. Now, how about if you're using Office 365, you can make this as a default option. You might ask me how. So let me quickly show you the feature of Office 365, how to make certain pivot table options default. So I go to file, I go to options. Then under data tab, you see something called edit default layout. I'm going to click on that. Now, towards the bottom right corner, I see something called pivot table layout options. I'm going to click on that immediately. Once I click, I get the exact same dialog box, which I generally get when I right click on the pivot table. So I go to display and then I choose classic pivot table layout. If I do that and I press OK, let me see if I can make the pivot table again after deleting this sheet. Let's see what happens. I select the data again. I go to insert and then I click on pivot table and click on OK. Whoa, noticed. So basically, this row fields is the one on the left. This column would be on the header. This values refers to the data which is in the middle and filter would be right on the top. So when I click on the pivot table, you will be able to correlate much, much better. Now, the most important thing is that in the pivot table, this area is dedicated for the maths area. Which area, Rishab? The one which is called value fields area. Anything that you wish to do in terms of mathematics, you need to use the fields here. So let me begin. First, I bring in sales date in the row field. And if you have a date, you can actually select one of the given cells, only one cell, and then right click. You will see something called group. If I click on group, you will see you are getting things related to date. So if I choose years and months both, you can click on OK. Whoa, I get to see the year and month. Now, if I bring sales, gross sales amount in the maths area, and then I go to insert and make a simple chart, it quickly shows me three years sales trend. Isn't that great? So yes, dates can be grouped. You can pause the video, rewind the video and watch that trick again. You can even go ahead and right click and ungroup this so that you can go back to the normal state. Now, apart from this, you can also use grouping for one more reason. For example, gross sales amount. If I put that here, these are all individual ticket size of sales transaction. How about I right click on any one given number and go to group? Whoa, this time I'm not getting years, months and quarter. This time I'm getting the minimum transaction value and the maximum transaction value. How about I make the starting as zero? Whoa, I'm able to cluster the entire sales transactions into different clusters and I can tell you by simply putting gross sales amount in the maths area and I can see count of gross sales amount. So it's telling me what has been the most popular transactions ticket size. So let me go back and show you more such tricks. Let me go to sales date, right click again on the sales date and this time go to group months and years, correct? 
Now, let me talk about region. Let's see what there is in region. So I can see Australia, Canada, France, Germany, UK and US. Then I put the sales inside that and I can see all the analysis there. How about I untick the region and then I right click on the region to get to something called add as slicer. Whoa. So I have a quick user interface which allows me to see what data I want to pick up one by one. But hey, this data is not right. And the reason is you are still getting count of gross sales. So Rishabh, how do I change this to sum? Well, you can choose any one cell, right click and then go to summarize value by and then choose sum. So what you're seeing right now is sum. Let me give you another overview. Because of this dates breakup, you see years have been placed in the rows and sales date has been placed into the date, correct? This is nothing but the months. So let me try putting the years in the column field. Whoa, I get a completely new look. I might take a moment to format these numbers. Now, I could also ask for this number divided by this number or this number. So let's see how to do this percentage calculation. So I right click on any given number of the value fields and I choose show value as percentage of row. This means the base number here divided by the row total. Simply choosing the option, you can also get the option of this number divided by the grand total. So depending on how you place your selection, right click and go to show value as you can get percentage of column total or grand total. As of now, let me try with percentage of column total. Absolutely. What does this tell me? That Jan, Feb, March as a part of total year sales of 2016 were hardly 17%. Majority of the sales were concentrated here. Now let me go back by changing this to simple values. So I right click on the value and I say show value as no calculation. If you could watch our previous video on data visualization, you remember using conditional formatting, heat map, data bars and spark lines to be able to give life to this kind of a data set. Next, I can use business segment to be put on the report filter and it will allow me to filter my data based on that. Now it has a very unique feature which I'll show you right now. What if I have put business segment onto the row filter and I can see all, correct? Now I go to pivot table analyze. I click on this option and I see something called show report filter pages. You might not see this if you have not brought anything inside filter. So there must be something inside the filter. So let me go back and click on this drop down menu of options. When I say show report filter pages and I click on OK, whoa, in few seconds I see four sheets being created, accessories, bikes, clothing, components. So that's the trick. It means whatever there is there in the filter, show me all the pages of the filter. That's the meaning of this trick. Now let me return back to my base pivot table. A lot of you might be experiencing this, that when you refer to a cell, you get this get pivot data problem, right? Well, you can disable that by choosing the pivot table, going to analyze and then ensuring that this option has been disabled. Next time when you, re when you refer to a cell, it's just going to refer to a cell reference and not the get pivot data formula. Next, a lot of time people accidentally close this pivot table field. So we'll see how to bring that back in case you close this accidentally. You can right click on the pivot table and tell us show field list. Now let me reduce some of the data sets from here. Let me remove all these options and then let me just put the product category into the rows. So basically what you drag and drop on the left hand side can also be done here. Now let me remove the year from the columns. Now if I wish to sort this data, I can select any one cell and right click and go to sort, sort largest to smallest. So there you go, road bikes, mountain bikes and all these are the ones which are of highest sales. Why don't I bring the same gross sales amount again in this maths area, either from the left hand side or at the bottom right corner under the value section. So if I do that, I get a parallel column. Let me change that column calculation to summarize value by sum and then let me again go right click and choose show value as percentage of column total. So that tells me the top three products 
constitute almost 80% of the total sales. I can see that in the status bar below. So for now, let me simply remove these percentages by going to the bottom right section and drag it back. If you want an automatic chart, you can simply press F11. This is the kind of chart that you will get in a different sheet. And that tells you what has been your sales across different product categories. A lot of people ask, Rishabh, what if there is an update in the data? Well, let me tell you that if you have new columns getting added to the data, then you must go to the pivot table, go to analyze and click on this option called change data source. And then you'll be allowed to add the additional column if you have any. If there is a simple change in the existing data, such as somebody changing this number, then, then you can simply right click on the pivot table and click on refresh. So my friends, this was a quick video on three years sales data analysis using pivot table.